Hello again, this is Dr. Nunez with Living Health. Today I wanted to touch on a new article that was published in Nature Magazine on the effects of sleep on blood pressure. And again, the subject of all these talks are lifestyle, lifestyle medicine. This is the area of medicine that looks at how your lifestyle impacts your health and well-being. These are the choices you make that you have control over on a day-to-day -day basis that can impact your health and well-being. If you like these kinds of talks, press the, the thumbs up, press that subscribe button, and press the little bell so you can be notified of future videos. And leave a comment, it's always appreciated. So getting right into it, the article that was just published in Nature, and I'm gonna link to it in the description below, is titled Association Between Sleep Duration on Work Days and Blood Pressure in Non-Overweight, Non-Obese Population in NHANES, a public database research. That public database, by the way, I'll link to it down below. Also, uh, the CDC has it on, on, on their uh, page. So I wanted to highlight what, it, what is it that they look at? Well, it's a survey, so this is subjective. This is how people are reporting their own sleep patterns. And this is also not just in the people that are not overweight, but they excluded anybody that was known to have high blood pressure and was on uh, high blood pressure medication. And the survey, they concluded that this is uh, not unusual in, in these studies that we see. But I'm going to read you that conclusion. In non-overweight, non-obese population, especially in females, both short sleep duration of less than six hours and long sleep duration of greater than eight hours on work days were correlated with higher levels of systolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is that top number on your blood pressure. You usually give you a, a higher number and a lower number that says X over Y. Well, that, that bigger number, that's the systolic blood pressure. And it measures really that pressure in, in your arteries when that ventricle is contracting and pushing blood out into your circulation. And yes, that is one of the measures of hypertension, of high blood pressure, which is correlated with bad things like uh, risk of stroke and heart attack and, and even kidney issues later in life. Uh, so it's important to have your blood pressure under control. And this particular article addresses the issue of the role of sleep. And yes, if you get too little sleep, it seems like your blood pressure does go up. And that's, we've seen it in other, uh, other uh, studies as well. And I'm gonna, quote, uh, I'm gonna link also below to uh, an article from Mayo Clinic on the issue of getting enough sleep. So in lifestyle medicine, as I've mentioned on other occasions, what we emphasize with sleep is to try to get seven to nine hours every evening. So don't try to, don't dip below seven. There are other articles that talk about uh, uh, health issues as you dip down too low below seven hours. And yes, getting excessive sleep may not be the best for you either. You have to look at, well, why are you getting too much sleep? But I think in most of the, the developed world with the uh, stressful culture that we live in people tend not to get enough sleep and that's the, the usual complaint so emphasis on sleep i tell people too to not sacrifice your sleep in order to exercise if you're dipping below seven hours of sleep a night in order to get some exercise figure out another way to fit in your exercise into your day so you're not sacrificing uh, and dipping down below what is optimal levels of restorative rest. What else can you do for high blood pressure? We've talked about in, in the other articles about nutrition, about exercise, limiting the salt intake, limiting the stimulant intake, caffeine and those kinds of things, and getting some, some exercise even if it's just walking and walking regularly and you can build up from there what we call cardiovascular or aerobic exercise if you can tolerate that kind of thing. Always look for uh, and get it, your clearance from your healthcare provider that you are able to do certain physical activities. But I, I wanted to come back to this point of, of sleep, how important that is. And it shows you just one data point here in this article on how sleep can impact your blood pressure, which can then impact these other issues of stroke risk, heart attack risk, and, and the like. And it is something that you can do for yourself. You want to have that wind down period before you go down so you get in the mood and in the ritual of trying to get your rest and sleep. You try to dim the lights, try to reduce the stimulants around you. 
Uh, try to reduce stressful things that are around you. Darken things, make your bedroom cool, uh, make your bedroom dark, and uh, try to get into the same habit where you have the same bedtime, same wake time, seven days a week. So your body falls into a routine, your mind falls into a routine, and you get your natural restorative rest. It does have great health benefits. So again, going back to it, this is all about lifestyle and the quality of your lifestyle can be enhanced by quality sleep. Give it some thought, give it some emphasis. If you like these kinds of talks, press that thumbs up, press that subscribe button, press the little bell for notifications of uh, future videos and leave a comment, it's always appreciated. And again, until, until next time, I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. Bye-bye.